Rapnetwork.com Go, 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 it's your birthday. We gon' party like it's your birthday. We gon' sip a party like it's your birthday. And you know we don't give up. Hi guys, today when I'm in Malula Bar on the Sunshine Coast and I've just caught up with the ex-Great Britain and Leeds, Brisbane, Broncos, Prop Forward, Harvey Howard. Harvey, how are you? Very well, thank you. Listen mate, you've been in Australia for a couple of years now. Uh, what have you been up to? Well, basically from uh, from my changeover from uh, Hull KR uh, head coach, I uh, decided to move to Australia, uh, where uh, I first came over here in 96, uh, playing uh, rugby league for Western Suburbs. Uh, I've come back now and done the full circle, and now I've been put in place and fortunate enough to be the uh, West Tigers, West Magpies coaching development manager. Okay, so you're now uh, a coaching development manager. You're also a level two strength and conditioning manager and an elite coach, assessor. What would you say the three most important points or what would you say the important points for amateur coaches are with regard to their strength and conditioning programs? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question because as you can see in a lot of amateur clubs and junior leagues clubs in, in the western suburbs, they don't have the facilities of weights uh, to combine with their strength and, strength and conditioning. So uh, I would suggest to a lot of the amateur coaches is to try and utilise uh, their own body weight exercises, uh, for instance press-ups, sit-ups, uh, hill running, even you can get hold of medicine balls and stuff like that, combining in with your uh, routine of strength and conditioning. Um, on an overall view of the whole strength and conditioning, uh, for myself, uh, I personally think the game is going to skills game conditioning where before the old days of just running around the field and flogging players has gone away now we're going to the games where if you're doing a conditioning session you, you try and combine it with a skill based game so it's skill and a game conditioning so you're sort of killing that extra dead time you normally would uh, just by actually running them without the football so you're just sort of killing, t killing two birds with one stone sort of thing you're putting the ball in the hand and you're making them work, but you're also putting a skill-based game conditioning drill in there. Okay, mate, well, hopefully we're going to be getting some templates from you uh, for one rugby coach members, but uh, briefly on this uh, tape, can you just give us some tips on how to structure a conditioning training session? Just going off, obviously going off with a full season of maybe, say, 24 games in a season, uh, you would have to, what we call it in the strength and conditioning side of a periodization period, uh, obviously early in the season, the pre-season training, we're trying to do the pre-season conditioning, so it's a lot of the hard work, getting the groundwork and the base. So the base work, you know, we have to do a lot of the, the early groundwork and that combined. We could start a basic session off, we could warm them up doing ballistic stretches, going into ball work with ball in hand, and then from there we could go into drills, skills drills, where we're actually doing up off the ground uh, stuff, where they're actually every 10 meters they could be just up getting up off the ground going forward hitting the floor hitting the deck over 100 meters and sprinting back and you can just basically do that briefly for about five minutes ten minutes then your next your next circle you could turn into you could do a period of wrestling now wrestling is a very good way of uh, utilizing the strength strength and conditioning side of the side without having weights remembering that we haven't got weights as an amateur club so we're trying to develop them skill based core based skills from the game related to the game rugby league so wrestling is a per perfect transition onto the field so we're trying to learn them skills in wrestling and uh, we could have anything from just basically lying on the floor with an opponent on top of him and him trying to throw him off the back for him trying to turn onto his front and play the ball correctly you could do that over a series of t a series of sessions for 30 seconds just a simple drill like the one player holding the ball and the other player locking on and trying to rip the ball off him for 30 seconds and then swapping over. These are just a little simple base skill drills and conditioning drills which you can bind into your session without having weights. Okay, thanks for that mate. Um, mm. I heard the term fitness conditioning uh, and it's been banded about through a lot of Super League coaches and ARL conditioners. Uh, how would you explain it to the basic person who doesn't really know much about rugby league? Um, and somebody just said the term fitness conditioning. What is fitness conditioning? Uh, 
You mean skills conditioning? Skills, fitness skills conditioning. Yeah. Skills conditioning is basically um, a conditioning where you're utilizing the fact is that you're utilizing the ball and the skill and the drill at the same time. So we're trying to combine skill, uh, skill hand to eye coordination with the football, but we're also putting the conditioning phase of it at the same time. Uh, it's, a, it's a simple method, but it also has a few, um, a few advantages. Uh, the fact is they're learning the skill base of the game and they're learning that the basic skills in the game combined. What you're trying to do is you're trying to condition the players at the same time as two. Just simply could be a, a fairly physical game of touch. That is just, just a simple way of a skill based game conditioning drill. You know, you could have a ten aside little game of touch where you're actually asking them to come back to ten and go down on the floor and return on the defensive line. And you could you could have a skill based game touch conditioning where you actually speed the game up by playing a quicker, a shorter shorter period. You could have a five yard instead of a ten yard rule. Just little skill based games conditioning, but it, it it all goes back down to what what time you have. So if you only have a half hour session, you've got to try and we try and get as much as into that session as possible. Where normally you would just basically get your early season pre pre season conditioning by basically doing your traditional 400s, 200s, and obviously they're very good for base conditioning, but we're not utilising the side of the skill of ball in hand. Well, the skill-based game conditioning is where you actually have the ball as you're doing the drill as well. Can you just go into a bit more detail about um, how you term periodisation with the team? Yeah, basically periodisation is, um, is a terminology we use for like a full season period. But it's uh, periodi periodization is actually broken up into sections in the seasons, meno cycles and macro cycles. Uh, what we're trying to do is, as you can see from a season, uh, and from the changeover from the last season to the new season, we'd have what you call a transition phase. They're basically light drills, you'd uh, skill drills, you'd, you sort of turn into to just try and tick the players over from finishing a season into what we call a pre-season. These are the early phases of a season's training, pre-season training is basically the aerobic side of the training where we build a big strong base, combine building up from an anaerobic into a high state of anaerobic training. Anaerobic is short type shuttle based aerobic drills. Anaerobic drills were you'd basically uh, say for instance a 30 second shuttle and um, you would time a player how quickly you could do that 30 seconds subtle uh, with a repeat sets of eight sets with say 30 seconds rest in, the, in, in between each set. Um, going back to the aerobic side is more or less the long stuff, the traditional running long runs basically to get the base, uh, cutting down to the short anaerobic. So this is the early part of the uh, what we call the pre-season training. Going from pre-season training, basically we're working into season training, we're trying to combine keeping the level base of fitness for a player, uh, taking consideration that he is maintaining his fitness throughout the game periods too, the actual game time he plays combined with the, the training he's doing at the club itself. So it's basically having that intuition of what level you're at at that stage uh, and judging what level your player is at in that time of period of the game game and season part of the season so at this stage obviously in the middle of the season we're looking at just maintaining the fitness and in the series of what we with terminal periodization there could be a phase in one of the cycles where we're actually trying to build a level of peakness for that period for a bigger game uh, and maintain that sort of high intensity for that game so to summarize you have your transition period your pre-season in season, and then obviously your maintenance program. Yeah. Well, would you say that's fair that indication of what it is? And we'll be giving uh, templates on how to structure these sessions uh, from the One Rugby Coach website. Yeah.